Hello my beautiful creatives and welcome back to my art channel. My name is Chrissy B and I'm a creativity coach hoping to inspire you to live a more creative life every day. Today we will be working on a mini 4x4 canvas. We're doing one of these every week and today we are doing our third one. So um, just to recap, the first one I did was breathe and the second one I did was connect those two. And I want to do a third one today that will complement these, um, but not necessarily match them so much, okay? Um, the only rules I have in place for myself are, I'm gonna use a four by four canvas, the same kind for each one of my 10 weeks. This is a Simply Stretch canvas. I think it cost me something like 98 cents at Walmart, something super inexpensive. Um, the other rule I have in place for myself is that I will only choose colors from my assortment of golden sample colors. And that's because um, I don't really use these and I thought it'd be a fun way to use them. So the last rule I have for myself um, is that I, each one will have crystal gel on it put through a tiny punchinella, which is one of my favorite parts of this whole process. And the other thing is I have a bunch of words that I have already kind of pre-stamped out and I'll choose one of these words to put on this canvas. That's generally my only rules. Other than that, it's all about playing. Let's get started. The colors I wanna choose are fluorescent pink, teal, fluorescent pink, teal, uh, green gold, um, Quinacridone Nickel Azo Gold. I think this is the color that's actually tying all of the pieces together. If I use that in there, they'll go together somehow. The fluorescent pink is the one I'm a little scared about today, but we're gonna play anyways. We're gonna do it anyways. The only other color I think I might bring in um, is the indigo. It just really depends. Like I said, I just kind of play and then go with my gut. And then just kind of do what feels right. I'm gonna start by adding some book pages. Okay, so I'm just gonna take the edges and tear my edges off. And then I'm just gonna cut, uh, cut. I'm gonna tear this up. I've done this many different ways. Well, I've done this two ways so far. So I'm gonna do it a little bit different this time. I'm gonna use some matte medium to adhere that down. And a brush. My poor little matte medium brushes are all starting to die. I'm starting to lose the ability to move the bristle except for just the tippy tops, which means mom's gonna have to figure a way to fix her brushes. Anyone have any ideas on how that works? Any ideas on ways to bring brushes back to life? That'd be awesome. So just put some matte medium down on my spread. I say spread, but my substrate, my canvas. And then I'm just gonna start putting pieces of paper down. And this time I want all of my papers to go in different directions. I am putting a coat on top of it as well as underneath. So I'm just gonna adhere these edges down to the sides. Okay, now that I've gotten that completely dry, I'm going to take the first of my colors that I've selected and I'm gonna use the fluorescent pink to start. And I'm gonna put a drop on my um, under paper and I'm just going to use my finger and kind of spread it on. I want to remember to take it down to the side of my canvas. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, okay? And I'm going to grab the teal. Same thing, just take it with my finger and rub it on and around. Let that kind of mix. Love that, love that. 
not really having any plan, just kind of playing. And wet my finger off again. And I wet my finger off because I don't mind the colors mixing on the canvas, but I don't want them to mix on my finger before they hit the canvas. And I'm going to use the green gold because I think I've lost my ever love in mind and I'm not sure what's going to happen, but we shall see. Just kind of get all those colors kind of blended somewhat together. Hmm. I'm not sure how I feel about that. That's okay. Just picking up some color with my finger and then wiping it off on my baby wipe. I take some off. I want to bring some of that pink back in. So I'm making a little room for it. And apparently you can't. Let's see. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Whoa, mama. <laughs> or make a big mess. That's That works too. Just go with it. You never know. Just go with it. Okay, hate it. Gonna give it a quick little wipe off. I'm gonna dry it and we're gonna try that again. Okay, I know what's happening that's making me not like it, and that is when the pink and the green uh, touch. And the pink is really, really watery. I don't know if that's the way it always is, but it's kind of making a big old mess. Anyways, it's when the pink and the green are hitting because they're opposites, like one's a warm, one's a cool, um, and they don't like it. They turn into like a muddy brown, and that makes me unhappy because I don't want muddy brown. I want happy, have a joy, joy. It could be deep and dark and rich, but I want to have like a happy feel to it. I did really enjoy that purple as well that popped up. So I'm going to add some more blue. See if I get some more of that purple to pop up. And I think what I'll do before I add the green, I'll dry the, the colors that I've got going. So that way they don't muddy up. The green just kind of sits on top. We'll try that and see if it works. Not forgetting to go down the sides. I want some more of that purple. Come back, purple. Let's go right over that pink. I don't mind the pink showing. I just kind of want more of the pink to maybe be an undercolor, maybe. Maybe that's what I want. Yeah. Put a little more blue in there. Now, now that the pink and the blue are on the way, I like it. Let's dry that and then put the green on. Okay, I think that is dry. So let's whew, try this again. Let's see if it works. See, a little better. I don't want to put it on so matchy matchy though. I really do want to keep it kind of loosey goosey. I don't know, apparently today I'm a poet. I don't know where that came from, but you are welcome. <laughs> Let's put a little bit over here. Kind of to turn it into an orangey color, probably because it's so much yellow in this green. Kind of gave it a orangey hue. And without missing a beat, let's grab the Quinacridone Nickel Azo Gold and put some of that on here. This one I want to really orange up. If it's going to be orange over here, let's really orange it up. 
and bring it down the side. Let's see. It needs something. It needs some dark. It's got a lot of um, kind of medium tones. It doesn't really have any dark tones. So I feel like it needs maybe that indigo I was talking about. Kind of bring that back in. I love this color. I don't want to waste any of it. Now let's grab that indigo. I won't need much of it, I don't think, because it's so deep. Keep blending, blend, 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 blend. Just kind of let it kind of fade into the other colors. A little touch of blue up here. I don't know what's happened, but I really love it. A little bit of that blue down the side. And let's see, is this side over here? I'll just do a little bit of the blue over here. So I don't want to lose that gold. I love it. Okay, what do we think? What do I think? There's still so much to do on it. I think we're doing well. We have so many other options. So let's close the green. I kind of feel like we have this awesome orange over here from the Quinacridone Nickel Azel Gold. Just want to see if I can bring even a hue of that over here. See what I mean? Like that. Deepen that side up a little bit. I love finger painting. So I love this small size because it's so easy to finger paint on it. There we go. Deep, dark, happy, scrumdiddlyumptious. Let's change up some of the edges. I don't, I don't want them to be too mousy. I want them to look like maybe you found them in your great aunt's attic or something. Like the cool aunt that lets you search through her stuff because you might find a treasure, you know, some old Hollywood-esque style something. Yep, I love that. So let's try that. Okay, so now what do I want to do? I do not know. Mm, I feel like I've got all of the background paint color that I want, so maybe I should go with a stencil. And because I've never used this before, I want to use that stencil. I'm going to grab some white paint. Now, just because I'm going to do this with white does not mean I'm not going to put color back on top of it again. I just, I don't know, I think this will be really kind of cool. Is this how I want to do it? Okay, I have an idea. This might go horribly awry, but we can fix anything. It's mixed media. If you don't like something, put a layer on top of it. Okay, so don't panic. I say that to myself. I say that to you too, but I say that to myself. We are going to take some white paint. This is the Handmade Modern, which comes from Target's a Target line of kind of a thick paint. And I'm going to smear it all over the front of my canvas. This is why I said don't, don't panic. Okay. And I'm going to kind of put it on there like I'm putting a layer of, I don't know, mayonnaise. Which, I don't really like mayonnaise, so eek. But just imagine, okay? Like we put a layer of mayonnaise on there. Have a clean baby wipe out. And I'm going to wash my finger off real quick, dipping it into my water bowl. To make sure that is really, 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 really clean. Okay? And we're going to move kind of quickly. So I'm going to take my stencil. I'm going to press my stencil into place. 
This may work, this may not work. And I'm gonna actually put my stencil so it lines up with the top and the edge because I'm gonna have some white space over here I'm gonna have to wash off. Press your stencil into your paint, take your baby wipe, and just start, hold your stencil really well and just start cleaning off all of the paint that's showing, okay? So instead of using your stencil like a stencil, you're now using your stencil like a mask is what we're doing. And fold your baby wipe, and if you have to get a clean baby wipe out, just get as much of that white paint off as you can. And don't be afraid to really kind of get in there. Okay, never used this before, I don't know. I hope this works. Okay. And we'll see what this looks like, but I wanna grab one more baby wipe. Today, apparently today's a baby wipe day because I just want to really make sure I get all of that white off that I can. And it's all over my hands, which is fine. It's proof that I'm a mixed media artist. Okay, so what I'm gonna do when I peel this off, I'm gonna try to get as much of that white paint off and any white paint that's overhung the edges. Okay. So, wrap my finger, brush that down, see if I can get that off in a way that looks artistic. Take it off the edges. around that out a little bit with my finger. Okay, so um, I have all this paint left on my stencil and I have these areas on the side that the artwork does not wrap around. So what I'm gonna do, again, might be, it might work, might not work. I'm just gonna press my canvas down onto that stencil to see if I can pick up some of that white, like that just to give it a feel of, I don't know, some of those cogs running around the outside. Okay, I'm gonna wipe my stencil off and I'm gonna dry this. Okay, so that is dry. And I'm trying to think what to do with it. I have no pink showing and that kind of bothers me, but I do some purple. I'm just gonna take my finger and I want to just kind of wipe some pink on some of that white cog area. I want some pink, I don't want a lot of pink. Let's kind of take some of that down to these little white pieces, which are more like, I don't know, splatters versus cogs, but that's okay. I want to take some of that quinacridone iso, nickel iso gold again, I think. And just kind of give it a little bit of a rust. I want the cogs to be this rusty color is what I'm saying. Some of the paint can show through, that'd be awesome. Just take the crisp, stark whiteness away. Okay, so I feel like I have a little bit of pink showing. I could put a little more back, kind of make it kind of an orangey-ish. I don't want to lose all of that gorgeous green that's underneath. I don't like the way that gold dried. Let's try that again. There we go. Now, let's come back in with some gold. The green gold, that is. At this point, I'm just playing. I wanna see what I like. And let's grab a little more of that indigo.
What about that light blue? Ooh, mayday, mayday. Blah, blah, blah. Pick, pick, pick it up. <laughs> yeah, that was a nice try. You know what I like, though? I don't know if you can see this, but the the stencil left kind of a texture thing happening here. And when I did that, I wiped some of the color off the top peaks of that texture. And I'm just touching my baby wipe down really, really, really lightly. See if I get some of that white to pick back up again. To show back up. Oh, that's cool. Yay, see, happy accidents, people. This is how, this is how miracles happen when you're art journaling. You're like, oh look, all those little peaks are coming back. Okay, do we like it? I feel like we got a lot of peaks here. Like that. So the color is kind of like sitting down in the, the crevices of the stencil. It looks very ethereal. Like maybe it was a science experiment or something. Even the pinks and the blues. Oh my goodness. This is so, I don't know if the camera is picking all of that goodness up, but it is so cool in person. Can you see that? So all the little texture, I was able to get a lot of that up. Love it. And that's with the baby wipe. Super simple. And seriously, that was a mistake. I did not think this was working. And all of a sudden, I had a Eureka. Oh my gosh, look at that. Don't ruin it. See if I can do the same on the sides, just a little bit. It'd be cool if the sides do it, but it's not quite as important to me because you don't, it's not the side of the art that you generally look at. But I'll know, so that's why I'm doing it. Okay, that technique I'm going to have to use over and over and over again because I love it. Let's give that a dry so it can stay permanent. Okay, so while that's cooling off, let me choose my word. I think I'm just going to use focus. Now, the words that I've, I've stamped out were words that I think about when I am meditating. And my rationale for that is because when I look at these canvases, I want it to remind me that even though your eyes aren't closed, you're not sitting on your in your meditation spot, or you can meditate anywhere at any time is what this is going to remind me. That's my hope anyways. So I'm going to choose focus. And I really, really, really hate that this has this weird thing here. So I'm thinking that that's where that's going to go, but I don't want it to be so off center. So maybe if I just do like that. Yeah, that's very cool. Okay, but I need more. I don't I don't know what, but I need something. First thing I need is I need some doodling. So let's grab my doodling stuff out. My Stabilo pencil, my uh, Signo Broad white pencil, pen. Let's see what else. My regular number two pencil, a fat construction pencil, a black doodling pen. And I think that might be enough for now. I don't know what I'm, what I'm, I'm just kind of making this up as I go and I don't know what I'm going to need. So let's just do some quick, um, grunging up to kind of like, you know, do what I do. And that doesn't seem to be showing up at all. So I'm going to use the fatter pencil. There we go. That's better. This is all very, very, very light, but I'm basically just doing hatch marks. Kind of a back and forth scribble. Remember the rule I had said, you might, I said this in the last couple of videos, but um, the rule is, is that anything that I would do on my art journal is fair game on my art canvases. I think what art journaling has done is it's given me 
lots and lots and lots of practice time. So that way when I do come to an art canvas, I have a little bit more bravery muscles going. See, this is so pretty all by itself. I just don't want to like damage it. You know what I mean? I do feel like we need to Stabilo, like I need a frame or something here. I didn't do these other, other canvases. I'm wondering if I should have. So I'm just scribbling along the outside border, the outside edge, and just licking my finger and activating that stabilo while also smooshing it down and around where I want it. I'm gonna do some more on the edge so it looks like it's not forgotten. Deep, deep, dark, dark, deep, dark, deep. I love that. Now I feel like I have to do this on all of my canvases because I just love it. Okay, where did my focus go? Focus. Is that enough? Okay, let's put this on and then I will doodle my little life away afterwards, I think. And we still have the crystal gel to put on here as well, so. I don't want it too close to the edge, so I have to be mindful of that. And I'm gonna look at my angle so that I can make sure that's straight. Focus. Focus. Let's take my black doodling pen and do some a scribbly border around here because that always makes me happy. Okay, so my focus is there. Now let's do some, I don't know, we've already got all these little circles, so let's do a different mark. We'll just do some little dashes, straight up and down dashes. And just kind of think a uh, random shape, not really a shape, but more like an amoeba. Okay, let's do some of those little guys up here. Okay, so let's do the crystal gel, just using a palette knife and the crystal gel. Love this. And a punchinello or sequin waste, whatever you want to call it. Now I have to be careful. Last week I did go a little crazy and I, um, swiped it quite a few times and I don't want to do that today because what it ends up doing is it smudges my paint uh, my pens okay so I want to try to do this in one fell swoop let's see if I can get some up here first and then we'll just do one fell swoop okay dunk that into my water so it doesn't get ruined same with my palette knife and here you have it. Oh, let me, sometimes you'll get a little couple blips on the side from the crystal gel. I just kind of wipe that off. I don't want it sticking off the edge. So there you have it. I love this so much. Oh my goodness. Okay, so that, that 
that is what happens in real time when you make a mistake and you just keep going and you work through it anyways, you don't give up and you end up coming up with something that like this whole technique to get that little cog piece to do what it did is so phenomenal. I'm going to adopt this and put it into all of my art stuff because I love it so blinking much. Yeah, love it. I think it goes well with the other two. Let's see if I can back things up a little bit and show you that. So there's, so to me it should go focus, breathe, focus, and then connect. So they don't match, but I feel like they go together. Like you can see them hanging on the wall together in my mind and they will somehow work. That's how I, this is the chronological order I built them. Anyways, this is the one for today. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed all of the series so far, but I can honestly tell you this one's my favorite because it's probably, one, it's because of the newest, and two, because of that cool technique that came out of nowhere. Like, where the heck did that come from? But woohoo! Um, I'm so happy to be able to serve you in this way. I hope that this gives you some ideas on things that you can do it either in your own art journal, your soul book, your, you know, any of your creative planners, or even in on a canvas. So don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe, share with a friend. Um, if you have any questions for me, please let me know down in the comment section down below. I'd be super happy to help you in any way that I can. Um, and thanks so much for watching. Until next time, bye for now.